Okay, good morning class. So this is part three of the day two work in our rational expressions, simplifying them using multiplication and division. We're going to rehash a couple of things we went over previously and delve further into simplification. First thing I want to talk about is converting between radical form and exponent form. Now, radical form is simply called so because there is a radical in the actual form here. An exponent or exponential form is called so because there is an exponent in the form. If you wish to convert between radical form and exponent form, you would simply take the index in a radical form, bring it over, that becomes your denominator in the exponent form. If you want to convert from exponent form to radical form, you simply take the denominator in the exponent, bring it over, and that becomes your index. Now, I have an example here, the cubed root of 8 squared and 8 to the 2 thirds. Both of those mathematically are equivalent to the same thing. Let's take a look here. If I punch in the cubed root of 8 squared, well, 8 squared is 64. The cubed root of 64 is 4. That's what we should get. And we do. So that's radical form. Now let's try exponent form. 8 and carrot, and let me see, to the 2 thirds exponent. It's also 4. So whether it's radical form or exponential form, equivalently, equivalently they are the same thing. Okay? Now, let's get into the example here. It says, write the expression in exponent format. We have the fourth root of 16x squared, excuse me, x to the 12th, y to the 10th, and z cubed. Again, this is in radical form. We're going to take this index and simply bring it over and make it our denominator. So, the fourth root of 16 is basically 16 to the 1 fourth. The fourth root of x to the 12th is simply x to the 12 fourths. The fourth root of y to the 10th is simply y to the 10 fourths. And then the fourth root of z cubed is just simply z to the 3 fourths. You see, the index is the denominator in each exponential expression. Then, of course, we could simplify each of these. 16 to the 1 fourth, of course, is 2. x to the 12 fourths is 3. Then this could be simplified as well, which would be y squared to the 1 half. And z to the 3 fourths, that's in its finest, final simplification form, so that would stay the same. So, again, taking the index, making it your denominator in exponent form. Let's look at our next example. Write the expression in radical format. We have 8a to the 5th, b to the 3 halves. Here, if this, this will be 5 to the 1, and this is 3 over 2, right? What we need to do is make them have the same denominator so that we can put them under one radical. So if I change this 5 to 10 halves, it now has the same denominator as the b to the 3 halves. Since they both have the same denominator of 2, that's going to be my index. So I make my index 2. So I can simplify this as 8 to the square root of a to the 10th b cubed. Because again, if I wanted to switch it back, the 2 would become the denominator, which we have here. But this is what it is in radical form. 8, the square root of a to the 10th, b cubed. Okay? Make sense? All right, let's look at our next example. Write the expression in radical format. 3x to the 4th, y to the 2 thirds. Well, this y has a denominator of 3, Right now, this x has a denominator of 1, but if I change it so that they'll both be 3, it would change to 3 to the x to the 12 thirds, which is the equivalent of 4, and then y to the 2 thirds. Now, they both have the same denominator, which is going to be my index of 3. So I can change this to 3, the cubed root of x to the 12th, y squared because they have the same denominator. They're all under one root here. Okay, makes sense. Now, let's move on to our next example. Simplify negative 4x to the one-third y 
times negative 5 x cubed y to the 2 fifths. Well, the negative 4 times the negative 5 would give me the positive 20. x to the 1 third and x to the third, well, x cubed, I should say, uh, this has a denominator of 3. If I change this to a denominator of 3, that would be 9 thirds. So 1 third plus 9 thirds is 10 thirds, so that would be x to the 10 thirds. Here, y to the 2 fifths, this is basically y to the 1, I could change this y to the 5 fifths, so 5 fifths plus 2 fifths is 7 fifths, so this would be 20 x to the 10 thirds, y to the 7 fifths. Okay, and then if we further broke that down, I could change that to 20 to the the cube root of x to the 10th, the fifth root of y to the 7th, if we broke that down, something like that, but we need to go further than that, okay? Again, just the same way we made everything, the same denominator in the previous examples, we need to make everything the same denominators in this example. So, what I would do here, from the 20, x to the 10 thirds, y to the 7 fifths, 3 and 5 are my denominators here. The least common denominator is 15. So if I multiply this by 5, this by 5, I would get 20 x to the 50 over 15. Here, if I multiply by 3 and 3, I would get y to the 21 over 15. So now they both have the same denominator. 20 x to the 50 over 15, y to the 21 over 15. Now that they both have that same denominator, that's going to become my index. So I can simplify this as 20 to the 15th root of x to the 50th, y to the 21st. Now again, if anything I'm saying here seems a little bit too much, please go back and look at what I've said here. Hopefully you'll be able to just pick this up with very little issue. Okay, class, now let's look at our last example here to simplify. We have 3x to the 2 fifths, y to the 1 third, divided by 15x to the 4th, and it's all being raised to the third power. Now, it looks a little tricky when you first look at it, but if we break it down little by little, this is actually an easy example for us to simplify. I'm going to start with just taking just the numbers, the 3 and the 15. Well, 3 over 15, that just simplifies to be 1 over 5, correct? Yes, it does. Now, I'm just going to take the x's here. All right, so x to the 2 fifths divided by x to the 4th. Now, according to our law of exponents, whenever you have the same base, different exponents, you take the exponent in the denominator, subtract it from the exponent in the numerator. So this simply becomes x to the 2 fifths minus 4. And x to the 2 fifths minus 4 would be x to the negative 18 fifths. Why? Because if I change the 4 to a denominator of 5, wouldn't that be 20 over 5? 2 over 5 minus 20 over 5 would be minus 18 over 5. So, we're at x to the negative 18 fifths. Since this is a negative exponent, we make it positive by making it 1 over x to the 18 fifths. So, we've taken care of our x's, and then the y, there's nothing in the denominator, so I'm just going to take care of that next. I'm going to bring down what we have thus far. So, so far, we have the 1 over 5. We have the x over 18 fifths, which is in our denominator. Then we're going to bring that y to the 1 third. And then all of this is being raised to the third power, which we had not taken care of yet. Let's take care of that now. Well, 1 to the third power, 1 times 1 times 1 is just 1. So not much to do there. y to the 1 third times 3 is y to the 3 thirds, which is y to the 1, or just simply y. So our numerator is just y. Now, let's take care of our denominator. 5 cubed. 5 times 5 times 5 is 125. Right? Now, x to the 18 fifths. 18 fifths times 3. 18 over 5 times 3 over 1 is 54 over 5. So, 
y divided by 125x to the 54 over 5. So that's the answer we get. And then if we want to simplify this even further, of course, our denominator of 5 would become our index in the radical form. And then we can make this y to the 125, the fifth root of x to the 54. Again, this should be intuitive for you. If not, please go back through and look at this again here. But this is how we simplify. All right. Talk with you later, class. Have a good day.